everyone. Um, this is obviously a really special uh, media conference to do. Um, just a, a great occasion um, from sitting here, however many months ago it was, with uh, Ginny making the Olympic team. Uh, obviously, this is a very different different conference to, to do. So, um, you know, just a, a few words from me. Obviously, we're amazingly proud of uh, what Ginny was able to accomplish. Um, you know, not probably not just down in Rio, but really the whole last 12 months of her start of her WVU career has been been incredible. Um, you guys will, I'm sure, have a ton of questions for her about the experience, but um, you know, definitely very proud for myself um, and just the team and the whole university. Uh, not just Ginny, but also Nico and the success he had. Um, and I think the other special thing was, um, for me anyway, it was the the response, the fact that Ginny's medal was the, the very first medal of the Games um, has just been an incredible response. Um, the extra attention that that brought, I think, was incredible. Um, and it was really far-reaching, you know, not just uh, in West Virginia, not just in the US, but, but all around the world. Uh, and that actually was, uh, was great, not just uh, for Ginny and the team and WVU, but, but really for the sport of rifle and shooting as well. Um, you know, got so much great publicity for it. So um, with that, I'll open up the questions and uh, probably hear from, uh, from Ginny. Nobody? <laughs> When I left Rio when was that? to come home. So I think I left Rio on the 15th and we went to the airport and I ate in the Rio airport, which proved to be a mistake as I got food poisoning on the plane. Uh, so uh, our plane left a little bit late and we all ended up missing our connections, but I was very fortunate to get on the next flight. So yesterday I managed to land, get all my bags and drove right down to West Virginia and then when I got there the team came over to my house with food that I couldn't eat but it was very nice <laughs> they made it very special of a celebration for me what did you, what did you eat that made you sick? I think it was pasta so how do you feel now Jenny? better yeah. <laughs> started eating <laughs> so it's been like walking around town here today have you, have you had people come up to you it's been an interesting day, to say the least. I've had ESPN following me around to class to kind of do a, a day in the life series. So it's been a lot of fun to be able to go and show them around my world and also be able to experience the, the community of Morgantown supporting me. What's it like to get to this level? <laughs> Well, obviously it's great. It's great publicity, not only for me, like John said, but for West Virginia University and the sport of shooting. The fact that my medal was the first one made it very popular and made it so that my sport can grow because of that. And, you know, I might not want the media around me all the time, but that's par for the course. And that's my responsibility as an elite athlete. You still find yourself waking up some mornings and it's definitely been an overwhelming year for me, but at the same time, I've grown as a person as I've grown as a shooter. So for me, being able to handle it better is part of becoming successful. No. My, my goal has always been to be the best shooter I can be. And not only that, but to be the best person I can be, the best teammate, the best student, everything. And that doesn't change no matter how many medals or what color the medals or where you get the medals. All I want to do is go into the next year and try to improve and try to help my team. I'll have a bit of time off, which is a first, and then the college season will start, and I'm very excited for that. Jenny, from when you learned to shoot when you were 14 to now, did you think this is where you would be just five years later? I honestly never speculated. I was just trying to improve and I really wanted to come to West Virginia for a long time. So once I, I've got here, to be honest, I've just blossomed. I have all the resources I need and I couldn't be happier. How much has that confidence played a part in your success in shooting? And just it's a huge part. You have to have the confidence to go into every match to know that 
not only your self-worth isn't invested in the results of that match, but you can do anything you want to do. What other big takeaways do you have from being in Rio, just being there in general? The Olympics is a really special match because it's every country and every sport, and it's just a unique atmosphere. And to be able to go and experience that and to become friends with other Team USA athletes, to meet other athletes from other countries, it's just a very special, regardless of the competition, it's a, it's a special time. I had a lot of fun going to some other events. I got to see fencing, trampoline, and diving. Was there any, like, did you think at all about coming to late or something just so you could stay down there and hang out a little longer? So I actually did change my flights to be able to stay a few more days. Um, but in the end, you have to get back to school. Life moves on, and I thought it would be more stressful to miss a few days of school than to be down there. Did you have any classes today? Yes, really? I had three. Mm -hmm. really? What were some of your classes? So I started with second semester of physics, and then I have differential equations, and then I had intro to electrical engineering. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, what was the reception like? I mean, were, were there, I'm sure being in engineering, People are aware of you already just as yes. a classmate, but what was it like as you walked around wearing, you know, Team USA gear and people recognized, oh yeah, that's Jenny Thrasher. Like I said, the best part about Morgantown is the community. And for me being able to go, because I had a, an entourage of photographers with me today, I think less people approached me than I expected. But at the same time, all my friends are so happy and proud of me and to be able to just to just go and experience that and be thrown into the midst of Morgantown is great. ESPN wants you to wear the medal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I would have gotten bombarded if I wore the medal to class. Is it going to, is it going to go home with your uh, family? Or you I have not decided yet, but I'm going to put it in a very safe place. John, how do you handle just a sophomore who is already one of the most decorated student athletes in you know, university history. How, how do you, as a coach, say, okay, let's let's get even better, or let's you know maintain a level head? Um, yeah, I think you just have to, you know, go day by day a little bit. I mean, I think you know, I, I know Ginny's ready to just go back to being another team member and another student and back to normal life. So, you know, she's great to work with. Uh, with that respect, um, she's incredibly honest. So I know she'll come in my office and tell me what she's thinking at any time. So, you know, I think that'll make it easy. Um, you know, she'll have the same demands as always, but, um, you know, I think I'm more experienced now as well. You know, this is, I've had 10 years coaching. I've had people like Petra and Nico and, and other international students, other students that have been to the Olympics on the team. Um, so I think, I think it'll be pretty easy. I mean, it'll be a lot of managing her training schedule, taking the right amount of break uh, from now until the season starts, um, making sure that there's rest times. Um, but also then I think everything will, will probably just fit back into place. Um, it's gonna be her comfort zone as well. Um, and absolutely, I mean, in, in terms of the actual shooting and how to improve, um, you know, that, that comes from, from her a lot too. Like she wants to get better. Um, she's pretty grounded in that respect. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll work together as a team um, to, to just keep improving, finding ways to improve. Um, obviously as a coach and a staff, we'll, we'll, we'll find ways to, to motivate her, but I'm sure she'll find lots of ways to motivate herself as well. So, um, you know, I think it's gonna be a good challenge and a next step, but for a lot of aspects, it's gonna be business as normal with the team and Ginny fitting right back in as another team member just like last year. Like you said, you, you've been through this before as a coach with the others no medal. Can you, can you even begin to put into words you know, what, it, what it was like to, to watch? Um, yeah, I mean, it, not really. I mean, just really incredibly special to, um, to watch that. Um, you know, I was fortunate in London to actually watch Nico, you know, in person win, win his medal. Um, this time I was trying to follow it on a phone and, uh, you know, 
do it as best I could. I actually, uh, that day I was actually in Europe and, and at a wedding, so I was having to grab phones, follow the coverage, get in trouble from my wife occasionally. <laughs> um, but yeah, just incredibly, you know, one, you know, it's watching the match, um, you know, and kind of estimating what score it would take to get in the final. And, you know, Ginny just stayed right on pace and shot a really solid match, made the final. And, and then as she said, you know, anything can happen in the finals. She, she's an excellent final shooter. Um, and then it was just, yeah, and incredibly exciting watching the final and just, you know, I guess getting more and more excited and realizing what, what was possible. And, um, you know, even at the end, you know, probably took a little bit of time even for me to sort of let it sink in that, you know, she'd actually, you know, gone all the way and was going to be an Olympic champion. So just uh, incredibly special. Where, where in Europe were you? Uh, Holland that day. Oh. Were you able to call her? Uh, no, we were texting a good bit. Um, yeah, so we were able to keep in touch with text and, you know, I, I knew as soon as it happened, I may not hear from her for a good 24 <laughs> hours with uh, <laughs> how the media operates down there. and. Um, I know, I think she can tell you, I think she barely got to see her parents for two minutes. So, um, you know, I was able to send a message and I knew we'd catch up in the next, uh, next day or so. When you first met Jenny, um, what qualities stood out to you? Um, I think just a very outgoing, um, driven person. Um, just very uh, willing to speak her mind even as a whatever, 14, 15 year old camper. Um, yeah, I think uh, very determined and very, you know, had a great belief in herself. Um, and then what I really loved um, when she did come to camp that even though she, she was, um, you know, very outgoing, very talkative, she was still a, a great listener and, and very coachable. And she took in and absorbed all the information we gave her at the camp and she listened as much to uh, the team members that were coaching her as she did to, to myself. Um, so I knew that she was going to be a great, a great learner and that, you know, someone like that, if they have the determination and the motivation um, alongside those things, they, they can go as, as far as they want to be, uh, as they want. So, you know, and I'm sure in life for Ginny, that's going to be, you know, uh, you know, outside of sport, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, career wise, you know, engineering, medical, whatever that's going to be, um, she's going to have that drive and determination. So rifle is a very repetitive sport. You essentially do the same thing again and again and again. So um, if you've got that willingness to learn um, and you have that, that work ethic, then, um, you know, those are some really big factors. Jenny, this year's Olympics, there's a lot of talk about women and, and how empowering that was. For you to be the first uh, female athlete at, at the Obviously, it's a great thing for me to be able to do that. One of the best parts about rifle is natural ability does not hold you back. And whether you're a male, female, five foot one, six foot one, it doesn't matter. Rifle's a sport where you very much get out of it what you put into it. And that's the message I'd like to get across. Jenny, you mentioned earlier that you got to talk with a few of your USA, Team USA teammates. Mm -hmm. Um, but did you get to talk to Nico at all? And if so, did he give you any advice into the, for you know, your future? I got to talk to Nico as well as Petra and Jeeva a lot, so that was great. Um, I didn't really get any advice from him. He was kind of still in match mode. I was in recovery mode from my managing victory tour. But um, it's very nice to have that. <laughs> it's very nice to have that connection. And when you go to World Cups or you go to the Olympics, you have that community that spans across nationality. Any other feedback from your appearance with Dan Patrick? Because for the record, you did great. Thank you. So that was my first interview on the Managing Victory Tour. And after that, my entire schedule got changed. So I think they liked what they saw. <laughs> I, I've got to embarrass Ginny on the, oh, no. the Dan Patrick side. You know, when I did talk to her a few days afterwards, I'd seen a lot of pictures. Uh, from the interview and, and watched it and stuff and, and Ginny was like, John, I didn't even know who Dan Patrick was. <laughs> so, you know, it was obviously a great interview and, um, and I think he certainly seemed to enjoy it as well. But I think that's uh, kind of summed up, you know, Ginny's just uh, innocence in that respect <laughs> and just doing a great interview and uh, 
all along being fairly oblivious as to, to who that guy was. Yes, I did. Yes. So they were all very nice. Dan Patrick has a great sense of humor because I think he realized I didn't know who he was. <laughs> So we flew from Rio to Houston, Houston to Washington. And that same day you came here? Mm-hmm. Well, the long day. That was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you didn't really you didn't get a chance to talk to anybody? No. Back, back from that time. I know you said your phone blew up after the, the gold and you got to sit back together now. Or how's that, how's, where's that sound? I'll be honest, I haven't replied to very many text messages or Facebook or I'm still kind of putting myself back together and hopefully I'll get to that soon. Definitely, but that's why I was really excited to come back to college because this is my comfort zone and this is where I can get back to normalcy and routine. Definitely. I think this competition is one where you can mentally outthink yourself, and that's the danger. So for me, just being very focused, uh, during the match, I started out with some struggles, and I had to come off the line, and my Olympic coach down there said, Jenny, all you can do is shoot the best you can. And I got back on the line, and that's what I did, is I shot the best I could. I had a very bad hold, but it didn't matter. And then once I got into the final, I was very much focused on my breathing and that was the point where all the training and all the discipline just just came through for me and all I did was focus on my breathing and let my body knew how do what it knew how to do.